It's bloody early. It's seven o'clock in the morning. I've just had 25 minutes of faff fitting the camera gear. Oh, I'm gonna be late. I'm gonna be in traffic. This is a little taste of what the Husqvarna 701 Viplin is like on the commute. Strap yourselves in. Well, I've had the little Viplin from Husqvarna for about, well, I've had it for three weeks. I've been using it on and off throughout that time having a bit of fun on it. When, 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 when Husqvarna said, do I want to borrow the Vipolin? I'd seen the reviews of the bike. You know, I thought, well, my beard really isn't long enough to buy one of these machines. I don't drink enough coffee. I actually like a bike which handles and rides well. Not that it just it looks good outside coffee shops. So I really wasn't sure this was a bike I even wanted to try. It's obviously a small bike. And being a larger guy, I thought I'm just going to look like an absolute gorilla riding the thing around. I, I'm really not sure. So it is a Friday, 7am. I'm going to the, the British MotoGP round at Silverstone. So that is about two and a half hours from me. So I thought, why not take the Viplin and we'll see how the thing, what it's like in traffic. We'll see, we better give you a good overview of the whole bike on that trip. This is the 690 motor. Now that motor which is in the uh, the SMCR, that motor which is in the Duke 690. You know, we, we know about this motor. It's a fantastic power plant. But on the Viplin, what they've done is they've geared it down a bit. To make it more of a road-based bike, it's much more lower gear than what it is on the SMCR, for example. So you do tend to find, if you let the revs drop below 3,000, you'll be into the chug zone and you'll get some serious vibration. This motor is fantastic, but it is a big single and it still does suffer from some of the obvious big single flaws like low down tractability. But get it above 3,000 revs and it is surprisingly vibe free because of that balancer shaft. They've done an amazing job with this engine. And it's got so much mid-range. The suspension is firm, but that really goes in character with the whole riding position on the bike. It's a very, very sporty feel. So you want that, you want that suspension to be firm. It's firm, but even on this bit of road, which is pretty bumpy, it's pretty compliant. That, that WP suspension is good kit, there's no denying. What's it like for Pillion on the back there? It's all right. Good. Hold on tight though, we're going to get quick. This thing is sharp. Oh, the blipper's lovely. Blipper's very, very nice. Back brake is also great. It's, it's one of those bikes where you use both the brakes. It's not completely sports bike like in the, in the way you ride it. But it's a bit, it's a bit of a hybrid really. It's a bit of a supermoto style come road bike. Whoa, it's got some punch. So you can tend to use the rear brake just to set it up for corners and use the front brake if you want to actually stop. So the rear brake is like a, almost like a balancer to balance the chassis before you go into the corners and use the front brake just to scrub off speed. That's the way to ride it. So this is the first part of the commute, which is the twisty stuff. Whoa! This is the fun bit before you hit the uh, you hit the motorways. Through the fun bit, through the twisties, the back loads, this thing is absolutely beautiful. This bike also has the uh, the Akropovich the official Akropovich N-Can on it. Looks great. It's not particularly loud because it's a fully Euro 4 N-Can. So it's got the baffle welded into it. I did have a little play with my hammer <laughs> to see if I could remove it, but I couldn't get it out. I didn't try too hard. I don't want to damage the bike, obviously, but I thought it'd be nice to see if it did come out, how it sounded with the baffle out. But with it in, it's 
wow, it's only marginally louder than stock, I would say. Throttle response is beautiful. Doesn't feel like you're riding a, a wire by wire bike at all. Very responsive. Really nice. I found that all the new bikes, all the 2019 bikes I've tried this year, it seems the manufacturers have really sorted out how to meet these emissions without making the throttle response suffer. I've not ridden one bad bike this year for poor throttle response. It's great because there's nothing worse than spending out thousands and thousands of pounds on your new motorcycle only then to start having to put power commanders on it, get in the maps to correct fueling issues. The new bikes, certainly the ones I've tried, have been fully sorted from the factory, which is fantastic. Blipper is great. Very, very, very good. I love a blipper on a bike, as you know. Quick shifter, even between first and second. Very, very good. And none of those false neutrals. This is a properly sorted little bike. That is the end of the twisties. We're coming onto the motorway now. I can imagine when you're not moving around on the bike, when you're not throwing it through the twisty back roads, this seat could get a little bit hard. Let's see what it's like sat on it for an hour on the motorway. Oh, a little bit of filtering. It's actually very, very good for filtering because these bars are so close together with the clip-ons. They're not wide at all, enabling you to really slip down in between the cars. Right, we're coming through here, coming through, coming through, coming through. Let's not obscure this person in front of you, because that is a little bit naughty. Oh, I can't get the helmet up. Oh, there we go. Do, 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 do. This roundabout is a bloody nightmare. The little dashboard is great. There's also a hidden button here. You've got a mode and a set button. There's also a button which isn't marked. If you hold that down while the bike's not moving, I could be wrong. There's a button here somewhere. Yeah, keep that pressed and it will turn off your traction control. A hidden turn off your traction control button. We like that. Oh. Cruising at 70, piece of cake, four and a half thousand revs. As I say, the gearing change on this to make it more suitable as a road bike has really helped. This is a good motorway cruiser. Apart from you've got no wind protection whatsoever. Dull as dishwater. I've got an hour of this. Boring. I'll switch you back on in a minute. This is too dull to televise. All right, we'll just do a bit of a splash and dash. I think this has a 12 litre tank. We don't want the V-Power. Standard unleaded will do me, thank you. It's a funny looks now with the Insta 360 on the back. Ooh. Sausage pastry. Ooh, we've got a cheese and bacon slice. Could be tempted. Oh, sorry. Carried away. That's it. Brilliant. Thank you. If anyone asks me what this big stick sticking out in the back of my backpack is, I'm going to tell him it's Google Street View. Let's hit it. This thing is a quick little puppy. Yee 50 minutes on the motorway still. I'll turn you back on and I'll speak to you in a minute. Coffee. Oh, hour on the motorway done. It's now 20 past, sorry, half past eight. I'm a bit nippy, missing a bit of wind protection on this, but it's not too bad. You can still sit at 85, I've been sitting at 85, no problem on this. Let's go over here, because I'm going to do a bit of a walk around while I'm here, and I don't want too much attention. <laughs> so we'll park it over here. 
Oh, where's my coffee? Other coffee is available. Ah! So there she is, the little 701 Viplin. It's a good looking bit of kit. That is the optional Akropovich for it, which really does finish it off from the looks department. These are the bar end mirrors. That one is a bit loose, needs tightening. But again, finishes it off from the looks department. It takes off those hideous mirrors, makes the whole bike look rather sexy. And it does look sexy. The styling of this bike is a, is a big part of it. And I really just, I really thought this was just one big styling exercise, this machine, but it's really not. The position of it, the feel when you're riding it, it's a great rider's bike. It is a very, very good rider's bike. Little styling cues, which are rather nice. The rear tail light is rather nice. And then underneath the back here, this is says 701 down on like the rear mudguard back of the bike. Um, there's some nice little styling touches on it. 701, the rear pillion seat is sort of part of the, of the bodywork, a bit like the 390, uh, RC390, a little bit like that, that rear seat. The tank is a plastic tank or polyurethane tank. Again, you know, the, the shape of it is nice. You can really tuck your legs under that. It's stylish, but practical, I guess is the, is the term for it. As you can see, I mean, it's quite bright the sun, but you may not be able to see, but the running lights are sort of around the outside of the headlight. The braking is exactly the same as the 701 Supermoto. The engine is very similar to the 701 Supermoto, but as I say, the final drive is lower geared. So it's better for cruising, better for motorway cruising. Clocks, pretty basic, you know, no TFT here, but that's no bad thing. I do quite like old fashioned LCD. But it's got everything, all the information on here. Ref counter, te water temperature, fuel gauge, distance to empty as well. So a lot of people have criticised that the clocks are too basic. But have you seen a 701 Supermoto? <laughs> They've got nothing. That's got all you need. So there we are. That is your look at the 701 Viplin. But I'm going to jump back on. I've got another 40 minutes or so to do. My ass isn't too bad, it's coping, better than I thought. I mean, look at that seat. I really wasn't expecting much comfort from that seat at all. And I'm not saying it's the best bike in the world. I mean, you wouldn't want to really do long distances on this, but as long as you're in the saddle for no more than an hour, it's actually not too bad. Let's jump back on. I wouldn't have thought this motor have, would have the grunt to do sort of motorway work. I mean, this is a, this bike is 75 horsepower and it's around 70 newton meters of torque as well but the thing is it only weighs about 150 ish kilos so it's very light and you cannot beat a light bike the lighter the bike the better in my opinion and with that torque from that motor it really can do the do the motorway work it can sit at 85 no bother i've done i've done about 85 all the way up here absolutely no bother you get it to some twisty bits <laughs> and then you've got that fun as well this is a fantastic commuter okay we might do it in the winter <laughs> it's got no heated grips it's got none of that sort of luxury but as a summer commuter What a great little bike. When I test rode the little RC390, I was, why don't they do a 690 version of this? This for me is that 690 version of that RC. It's an incredibly brilliant chassis on this. There's no wallow, it's firm, it's stable. It's so sporty, but comfortable. So there we go, we're almost at Silverstone now. It's 10 past nine. What's that? Two hour, two, what did I set off? Seven before seven. Two and a half hours roughly. Two hours 20, something like that. Perfect comfort. I'm actually, I could do that again. I feel as fresh as a daisy. I wasn't expecting that with this bike. I really wasn't. It goes to show, don't dismiss a bike because you think you know what it's going to be like. I really thought this was going to be 
a hipster special, I thought you'd need to be a man who put product into your beard <laughs> to be able to enjoy this, but absolutely not. This is a rider's bike through and through. Everything about this is about rider involvement, rider enjoyment. So there we go, I'm off to enjoy some MotoGP action. Should be a good day. I'm with KTM VIP Pass, <laughs> lucky boy. But thanks so much guys, appreciate your support, I really do. Thanks for watching, see you later. This is power level one, which is full power. everybody. Ah, huh? this is awfully quiet for when the MotoGP's on. What's the time? 10 past 12 minutes past 9. I have got the right day, haven't I? I'm sure the MotoGP was 1st of September. <laughs>